Okay, so let's have another go at the ratio test. Um, so suppose we have a series where the, I need absolute values, suppose we have a series um, a sub n where uh, the limit of these ratios of adjacent terms is less than one. Okay, remember this is, uh, this is what we can think of as close enough to geometric. Right, so it's for a geometric series, this ratio is always equal to some constant less than one. So our series, it's not geometric, but this, this ratio, it's not always equal to the same number, but it al always, the limit of it is less than one. Um, so it's kind of close enough to geometric, and so we kind of hope that this means that the series will converge. Okay, um, uh, converge absolutely, right. So the, the conclusion we will ultimately draw here, just to sort of spoil the surprise, is that this series uh, converges absolutely. And remember, that means that, so it converges in the regular sense. So it converges. Remember, converging absolutely is actually better than just converging. Um, but anyway, OK, so our job is to show that somehow if this if this ratio is limit of this ratio is less than one, then um, then our series converges. Okay, so here's the trick. Uh, since this limit is one, we can choose some fixed value of n, capital N, large enough so that. Once we go past that, so for values of n that are bigger than or equal to capital N, um, the ratio of a sub n plus 1 to a sub n is less than, uh, oh, I didn't pick, <laughs> I skipped, uh, skipped something. So we need to pick um, a value of b so that, actually, let me call this r. In class, I called it b, so let me call it b again. Okay, so in class, we called this ratio r, and this r is le this r is less than one. So let's pick a value b so that b is between r and one. Okay. So what we need to do is pick a, a fixed val n little n value that we're going to call capital N that is large enough so that once we go past capital N, the ratio of absolute value of a sub n plus 1 to a sub n is less than b. Okay. And this is possible because remember what it means for the limit of this ratio to be equal to r is if we graph this ratio as a function of n, right, if we go far enough down to the right, the values have to sort of cluster closely around r like this. Well, if r is less than 1, then if we pick any b between the two, eventually, right, and draw this, hor these, this horizontal line, eventually all of the dots here have to be below the line at height b because they're all headed towards r, right? They have to get below b somewhere. If they always popped up above b like this, the limit, this, the limit of this ratio wouldn't be r. It would have to be at least b. Okay, so we have this, this value b that's between r and 1. It will be important that it's less than 1. And we also have this fixed n value, capital N, so that when we go far enough along, this ratio is less than or equal to b. Okay, well, for these, uh, for these values of little n, we can move this denominator to the other side, and we get absolute value of a plus 1 is less than uh, absolute value of a sub n times b. OK. And remember, this is for little va for values of n greater than or equal to capital N. All right, so now let's think about, let's think about our uh, series. Let's think about the, our our absolute value series, right? Because we're just going to show that this series converges absolutely, and then we'll know automatically that it converges. 
Okay, so if we write this out, this is absolute value of a sub 1 plus absolute value of a sub 2 and so on. Eventually, we're going to get out to this, this capital N term. So we're going to get absolute value of a sub capital N minus 1. So that's the one right before capital N. And then, let me start this on the next line. Uh, so the next one is going to be a sub absolute value of a sub capital N, and then absolute value of a sub capital N plus 1, and then plus absolute value of a sub capital N plus 2, and so on. Actually, let me do one more, I guess. Absolute value of a sub capital N plus 3, and so on. Okay, now all of these initial values, we're just going to leave those alone. So we could write that as the sum from little n equals 1 to capital N minus 1 absolute value a sub n. Okay, plus, and now let's write down the rest of these. So this first one uh, is greater than or equal to the absolute value of a sub n. In fact, it's equal to the absolute value of a sub n. Um, but just for decoration, I'm going to put a b to the 0 right here. b to the 0 is 1, so it's OK to put this here. OK, plus. Now, absolute value of a sub n plus 1. Remember, um, as long as our position in the series is greater than or equal to n, then the value of that position in the series is less than or equal to um, Uh, less than or equal to the term before times b. Okay, I'm actually going to want this to go the other way around, like this. Because I'm going to make each term a little bit bigger, and we're going to use the comparison test. Okay, so according to this inequality, because our, we are at position n plus 1, we are past position n, so we can replace a sub n plus 1 with something a little bit bigger, which is absolute value of the one before, which is a sub n, times b. OK, and then we can do the same thing for this, this one, because n plus 2 is also bigger than capital N. So this is greater than or equal to the term before, which is absolute value of a sub n plus 1 times b, plus, and then do the same thing again here, absolute value of a sub n plus 2 times b. And do the same thing for all of the later ones as well. OK, well, this one looks so, this term looks OK because it has a, a sub n, capital N in it. But this term right here, absolute value of a sub n plus 1, we just said we can make that a little bit bigger if we replace absolute value of uh, a sub n plus 1 with the absolute value of a sub n times b. And then don't forget the b that was there to begin with. OK, plus, and then for this one, again, n plus 2, that's far enough out that we can replace this with the, abs the one before it, absolute value of a sub capital N plus 1 times b, and then times, don't forget the b that was there before. And we can also do the same for everything after that. OK, well, notice this is absolute value of a sub n times b squared plus uh, this right here, that's less than or equal to the absolute value of a sub n times b, times this b, times this b. So this is absolute value of a sub capital N times b cubed, plus, and so on. Well, if you, if you look at the pattern that's happening here, right? this was at term n plus 0, and there's a b to the 0. Here we're at term n plus 1, and there's a b to the 1. Here we're at term n plus 2, and there's a b squared. Here's, here we're at term n plus 3, and we're, we have a b cubed. This pattern keeps going, right? At the nth term, we, have, we get absolute value of a sub capital N times b to the right, number of terms past n, so ca past capital N. So that's n minus capital N. Okay. So the upshot of all of this is that our series, our full series, n equals 1 to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n, is less than or equal to, because remember, we, we made every term a little bigger every time we've made one of these replacements. 
So our original series is less than or equal to this first chunk, so n equals 1 to capital N, absolute value a sub n, plus, well, if you look at all of these, they all look like absolute value of a sub n times b to various powers. And the various powers are, let's see, the power starts at 0 and then goes to infinity. So b sub, let me write it like this, b sub k sum from k for k equals 0 to infinity. OK. But look, this is geometric. So this is equal to this initial piece, which right, it might be very long, but this initial piece is finite. Oops, I wrote a capital N here, but this should be a little, little n. Right, this initial piece is finite, plus, and right, this tail piece here is geometric. And remember, we assumed that, that b was less than 1. So b is between 0 and 1. So this geometric series converges and, in fact, gives us a sub capital N over 1 minus b. Okay, and this is finite. OK, so looking at our absolute value series now, we know that it's less than or equal to this initial piece, the sum from 1 to capital N of absolute value of a sub n plus a sub n, sorry, absolute value of a sub n over 1 minus b. OK, so this series is bounded above. And it's increasing just because each term is positive, because it has an absolute value. Okay. So again, we have a, uh, a sequence that, that is bounded above and increasing. And that means that our absolute value series converges. But that means that our original series, without the absolute value, converges absolutely. And that means <laughs> that our original series, right? If a series converges absolutely, it converges. So our original series converges. All right, so the upshot of all of this is what we call the ratio test. If the limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over absolute value of a sub n is less than 1, then the series from 1 to infinity, a sub n, converges. As with so many of our, uh, as with so many of our convergence test, tests, this doesn't say what it converges to. It only tells us that it converges.